free. Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Banks can never struggles. go out of business. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yes, ma'am. I kept getting these yearly the notice? yep. <laughs> notices, and it was accurate. And your Aunt Mildred died? Oh, yeah, she passed away now, yeah. And, and you paid $500 for the funeral, right? Because it had been, <laughs> it had been done 20 years before. <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. That's one of those reasons that it's a benefit. Yes, sir? Is the interest paid on these uh, sums that are deposited in these banks? Yes. So it does grow to some extent. It does. Time. That's why we can guarantee it. And hopefully that interest keeps up with the rising costs. If it doesn't, we don't look to families for that money for the funeral home charges. That's right. But they don't get the interest until the need arises. Right. And right. If, the, if it gets transferred to another funeral home, the other funeral home gets whatever is in that account accumulated at that point. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding that? Okay. So just briefly, so Mass Health, as was pointed out, one of the reasons why people do this, and you've heard me talk a lot about Mass Health, if you need to qualify either at home under the Frail Elder Waiver or for nursing home care, um, one of the thing, one of the you can do to shrink the amount of remaining assets that you have because you have to have less than two thousand dollars in countable assets to qualify for Mass Health, is to buy one of these pre-need accounts. Um, once again, as Mike pointed out, they have to be irrevocable. You can't buy it and then qualify and have the ability to get the money back. Right, um, But interestingly, I have yet to see any amount in a pre-need account that has been disqualified by MassHealth as being too big. So I've seen pre-need accounts for twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars for one person um, that MassHealth has passed has been okay with. The other thing is the pre-need the purchase of the pre-need account is, I think, the only expense, the only thing you can do with your money. Um, after you've qualified for Mass Health, and they'll like backdate it. So the general rule regarding Mass Health is when you're doing applications to Mass Health, they operate on the cash system, not on the accrual system, right? So if you have ten thousand dollars in your bank account, and, but you have eight thousand dollars in bills, like to the to the your for, for your real estate or for whatever, right? The fact that you have the eight thousand dollars doesn't mean you can qualify in bills doesn't mean you can qualify for mass health because you're under two thousand dollars until you've actually paid that money out and gotten your account below two thousand dollars you cannot qualify for mass health this is the exception this is the exception so if you have a if you have fifteen thousand dollars in your bank um, and you apply for mass health and you haven't yet done your pre-need account and you then after you've applied Go and do that pre-need account to spend your account down below two thousand dollars. Mass Health will qualify you as of the day that you originally applied. They'll basically backdate that payment that you made on the pre-need account. So it's it's a because Mass Health has a real interest in making sure this is taken care of, um, and making and they're not concerned about the price on these, but they do have to be, as was mentioned, irrevocable. Now there are these policies that you can also buy these insurance policies that will pay for your funeral. Um, and I know that they are marketed uh, as being terrific because you buy the insurance policy and then you're not kind of bought into a particular um, funeral home. It's not a, fu a funeral contract with a particular funeral home. I will tell you that recently MassHealth denied one of these and said that was not a legitimate spend down because there was a provision in the, um, in the insurance policy that, that, that was, it was, it was revocable to some extent. Um, so I would be very hesitant about buying these as opposed to doing a straight pre-need account or pre-need funeral um, account with a funeral home. Um, we did that. Uh, finally, finally, um, uh, if you want to, if you just die, if you tell your friends, you know, we saw the show and they say, oh, you really did? and it isn't being shown on cable again, they can always see it on our, our YouTube channel. We're on YouTube, Frank and Mary's YouTube channel. Uh, and um, this is an ad. Most of the work that I do is to help people who are worried about Alzheimer's or who have got Alzheimer's. But in the long run, the question is how to end Alzheimer's. 
or figure out how to treat it or how to figure out, and this is where the research really is and what the Alzheimer's Association is paying for, how to slow down dementia. I don't really care if I have Alzheimer's. I care if I've got dementia. Now I don't really care if I'm going to get dementia as long as I know that I'm not going to get it until I'm 105. I can buy into that, you know. So the question is, how do we do that? And that's what the Alzheimer's Association does. They have one major fundraiser annually. Uh, and and uh, Frank and Mary have a team in that fundraiser, and they'd love to have any of you that want to go join. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. And then you, sir. When you have the prepaid uh, funeral, do you, what can you use that money for? For instance, if you've got a $15,000 prepaid funeral, and it only comes to 11000 what else could you spend that $4,000 on? Can you cater a, a reception with it? Can as long you? as it's a funeral-related expense, I assume that it would be allowable under the regulations. So remember, the prepaid funeral is a la carte. So there's a list of things that are going to be provided with a price next to each one of those things. It isn't like you write them a check for $15,000 and say, go do the funeral. Right. right? So they're going to be doing the things that are on that list and then they're going to get, get being paid for that. I will tell you that I have, uh, I, have I, I have been aware of cases where funeral directors have said to folks, oh, well, you know, you can pay us $15,000, and, you know, at the end, we'll pay you back four. I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that if I were you. Right? I would that's, that, no, I would, I, would, I would say that the funeral director could get in trouble for that, and, and as far as you're concerned, that's a federal crime, right? If you did that on behalf of, even if you did it on behalf of your relative in order to qualify, that's a federal, that's federal fraud. You don't want to go there, not for four thousand. Maybe if it's a hundred thousand dollars, for four thousand dollars, don't do it. Uh, I, should add, I, should add, I should add that in addition to these prepaid funeral contracts, there is a special extra thing you get to do in Massachusetts. You get to create a $1,500 account for, for, uh, for other stuff, for funeral purposes, right? To pay for the, for the extra flowers, to pay for the party and stuff. Now, one issue that has come up regarding those accounts is, is oftentimes people will make the mistake of putting them in the name of the person, the old person, right? Which means that when the old person dies, you can't get to the money unless you file a probate, except that Mass Health has a lien on it once you file the probate. You know, so um, it, it, I'll tell you the answer to that is that you, it, I, we've had the experience of folks simply putting it in their own name, putting it the daughter or the niece or nephew, putting it in their own name, and then filing an affidavit when you file the Mass Health application saying, I have this account for $1,500, it's in my name, and the purpose for the account is to take care of Aunt Bess's party. And they've taken that. OK? Answer that question. Uh, yes, sir, and then you, ma'am, and then we're done. Yes, sir. If someone dies here in Mass, they're cremated, they want to be buried in another state, once we've taken care of the cremation, so forth, procedures in Mass, what's the next steps in terms of trying to facilitate getting the remains buried in another cemetery upstate. So if a person has died in Massachusetts and been cremated in Massachusetts, yes. what, is the, what is the procedure for having the cremains um, actually interred probably in a cemetery lot in another state? Several right. different options. A family can bring the cremains with them and travel with them. They come with a cremation certificate um, oh. that certifies that they're cremated remains. You can travel on an airline with that as long as you have the certificate and that the box that they're, or the urn that they're in can be x-rayed. Um, so it would have to be something like a wooden rather than a stone or a metal that they can see inside of it. They don't open them up, but they have to pass through an x-ray machine if you're traveling through with TSA. You can travel with them in a car. Um, some cemeteries will receive them through the mail. Um, and also, too, um, we've done before for families is we've sent them from, one, from our funeral home to another funeral home. That funeral home has taken care of the internment of the urn at the cemetery. That's kind of what I'm wondering. Would I need to contact the funeral home in the town? Home? Yeah, I would suggest that. Or talk to the cemetery directly and ask them if they would receive them. I see. Yes, ma'am. Last question. The question is, is it better to have a life insurance policy or to prepay? Well, I'm going to give you my legal opinion, life insurance, or excuse me, prepay. Mm -hmm. Can you prefer life insurance to policy to prepay? Oh, you can? 
a um, couple different things um, that we've done with different families because of re regulations for qualifying is the state doesn't want to see the insurance policy as an asset, so they'll allow it to be transferred to the funeral home, and the funeral home is made owner and beneficiary of the policy, and it gets reflected on the pre-need part of that. That ought, we do that a lot. We do a, with, with small life insurance policies because typically these small policies have a, a surrender value that's often equal to the value of the policy practically. And and any policy, if the total of your life insurance policies exceeds fifteen hundred dollars, then the surrender value of all the life insurance policies is countable as an asset, and therefore it puts you over two thousand dollars. These policies regularly put people over two thousand. This is often the easiest way to handle it: is to simply do a transfer as part of the pre-need contract. Mm -hmm. Yep, they'll send you a form. And then if you were doing it with us or any funeral home, you'd go into the funeral home and set up an appointment and um, go through and set up the pre-need account and that would be reflected as, as the paid on account piece. Mm -hmm. Thank, nope, we're gonna, take, we're gonna take further questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you again, Joyce, for inviting us back. And thank you all for coming. And thank you all for